Hello and welcome back to another video today here again on Forza Horizon 5 to take a look at another brand new addition to the Forza series, which is this 1962 Lincoln Continental. Just like the brand new to Forza Plymouth Belvedere that we got several weeks ago, um, this brand new addition is available for 40 points in the festival playlist, unfortunately, which does mean quite a bit of grinding, and the Rossian Q1 returns for 20 points, which is another kind of cool car to go and pick up, although we do already have a Noble that's very similar to that in-game. Um, but anyway, to obtain my 40 points, as you can see, I've done the Trial, the Event Lab, um, the PR Stunts, the two Seasonal Championships, the Treasure Hunt, the Photo Challenge, and of course, the two monthly rivals that I did at the beginning of the month, as well well as some of the PR stunts on the expansions. So yeah, this is kind of why I have a bit of a problem with cars being 40 point prizes, because you do kind of have to grind through what's not a very interesting festival playlist to obtain the car. So I think going forward they should really only be putting the cars new to Forza cars as 20 point prizes like they were previously. So, although there's two cars that are new to Horizon 5, the Rossium was of course in Horizon 4, so today we're focusing purely on the Lincoln Continental, not to be confused with the Bentley of the same name, which coincidentally is also a huge boat that doesn't handle very well. This generation of the Lincoln Continental, of course, is most famous for making presidents more open-minded, and also one, if not the only production four-door convertible when in drop-top form, Part of what made this possible was its incredibly cool suicide door layout. Throughout its different generations, the Continental is actually one of the longest standing car models in the world, entering production way back in 1939 and being produced right up until 2020. By then though, it did look substantially less glamorous, let's say. I mean, what happened to American car design? Just look at what this thing looked like by the time it reached the end of its production. I don't know how it went from looking like the one in-game to looking like that, but there we go. The Lincoln in-game is actually the fourth generation Continental, weighing a mind-blowing 2,236 kilos, whilst only managing to produce 300 horsepower from a colossal 7-litre, 430 cubic inch V8 engine, which really isn't enough for that much weight, even if we accepted that such a big engine produced so little power. Um, and for some reason, like in a lot of American cars of this era, it has a three-speed automatic gearbox, which is just horrible. Unsurprisingly then, it's incredibly slow, with a huge amount of body roll, putting it way down near the lower end of D-Class at 381 PI here in Forza Horizon 5. Being a big luxury car from the 1960s, it has a plethora of beautiful colours available from the manufacturer, including of course the black, which I think probably looks the best on it, because it just looks incredible in black, um, but also a kind of burgundy red, a bright red, a not a very nice bronzy gold colour, and another one, and a beige, and a beige, and a beige. So let's gloss over those, but also some rather nice greens, um, a couple of very nice blues, actually several very nice blues, including some sort of frosty blues and some bright blues. Um, another sort of beigey pink, which is horrible, and white, which actually, with the white interior, that also looks incredible. Um, but I think my favourite here is actually, surprisingly, the bright red. Unfortunately, though, the paint is actually the most interesting customization or upgrade option that is available for this car. Um, there's literally nothing of interest um, that we can do to it. Uh, there's the usual Forza Aero, which looks particularly ridiculous on a car this big. Um, there's the several engine swap options. There's of course a V8, but there's also a V8 diesel, another V8, a V12, a V10, and a V8 twin turbo. So there's quite a lot of choice there, I suppose. And you can all-wheel drive swap it if you want to ruin it. Um, and do things like this, but yeah, nothing unique or interesting particularly. It does, like a lot of cars of this age, have vintage tyres and the white wool ones, which I think I'm going to put on because they actually look incredible, although they'll probably come off if we download a tune or something for this anyway, um, but that's an option which I think looks incredible. You can, of course, bring the 
track width out to kind of make it fit the arches a bit better. Um, but yeah, like I say, it's all the usual stuff you'd expect. It's all the same drivetrain options you'd get on any car, all the same platform and handling options you'd get on any car, and pretty much all the same engine upgrades that you'd get on any car. So at this point, I'm really not sure there's much we can do with this thing. Even with full weight reduction, as you can see here, it still weighs 1,762 kilos. Um, there are a couple of other things we can do, like put that in to bring weight down even more, and put in a flywheel to bring it down even more. But it's never going to be a light car, so I don't think it's going to be particularly good at anything. One thing I have noticed, though, is, well... Look how low it goes if you put it on race suspension. You ready? Incredible. I mean, how cool does that look? When it's super low with the white walls and against the red, I think looks incredible actually on this. So although I suspected that this car wouldn't be great for anything competitive, I did check back the next day to see if there were any more tunes that looked half decent that were kind of purest B-class ones. Um, and there still wasn't really a great selection, wasn't anything that stood out to me as being potentially good, so I decided to go and make my own, basically, um, with pretty much the same set of upgrades as you just saw previously, um, but with the slightly grippier sport tyres, which put PI a bit into A-class, and then some bigger wheels to bring it back down to B again. With this equipped, I headed into B-class open, not expecting a huge amount of success. I managed to join just in time for the first race of a series at the Sierra Verde Sprint, where I was pleasantly surprised to see eight other people in the lobby, which I haven't really seen since Motorsport released, including, of course, Sneed driving and David is itchy. Um, I started sixth, but the Lincoln had an appalling start, immediately putting me into last place. Um, but then Sneed decided to do their driving on the wrong side of a checkpoint, giving me one place at least. For a little while, I also had a battle with the Sylvia, where strangely they had the straight line speed and I had the handling in the huge American boat. Um, but then they ended up putting themselves in a wall. An RX-7 then decided they also wanted to visit a wall, which then gave me a dodge dart to chase down, which I did manage, but then I misjudged the final corner pretty badly and got a slowdown penalty. So that lost me the place to the dodge at the end there, giving me a sixth place finish at the end of the first race, and I very nearly actually lost out to a Mazda 2 after that mistake on the final corner. The second race was at the Riviera Sprint, where I started in eighth, but just like in the first race, immediately fell to the back of the field. I then gradually made up places through the chaos of the race, uh, which included a BRZ managing to roll somehow, eventually finding myself all the way up in fourth place, um, at which point the race was going rather well. Um, then a dodge overtook me on the straight because I really didn't have any top end speed um, in the Lincoln, which was kind of okay. Um, but then the BRZ, presumably annoyed about rolling the car over at the beginning, went about pushing people into walls, which seemed to look slightly intentional, if I'm being honest, to purposely give them slowdown penalties and find his way past. Um, after this, I was down a couple of places to sixth then. Um, I did then briefly get into fifth again, but messed up the final corner, allowing two cars past before the line, giving me a seventh place finish. So even worse than the first race then. I was a bit annoyed with this race overall. There was a potential podium there, but with a couple of mistakes from me and that BRZ pushing me into a wall, um, yeah, that wasn't really what happened in the end. The final race took us to the Bahia de Plano circuit, where I started last, the game clearly knowing that I'd very quickly be at the back, even if it had started me higher up the field. Um, a skyline, though, decided not to turn for the first corner, so I pretty soon wasn't in last. And a few corners later, I was trying to kind of make a move on a rather slow RX-7 um, that hadn't had the best of runs out of that particular corner, who decided to then sideswipe me as I tried to overtake. I rather stupidly then pushed him into a wall on the way past, partly because I kind of felt like if I didn't do that, he would have pushed me out of a checkpoint on the other side and blocked him from getting past again, which began a bit of a war. Um, but I did um, soon enough manage to pull clear of that master before he could put me into another wall. And I then had a pretty fun race chasing down a Dodge and Sylvia, managing to take the dart when it ran wide, but not being able to catch that Sylvia, finishing sixth again then, like I did in that first race. 
So although I did have a few kind of fun races and it was great to see so many people back on this game again because I kind of thought that was the end for online races in these videos. Um, so yeah, it was really good to see people on there. Um, the Lincoln was not that great to be honest. Potentially with a slightly tweaked tune it could be a bit better but I don't think it's ever going to be great and you can kind of tell that by the fact nobody's really made tunes for it and it's kind of unsurprising given how heavy it is and how huge it is that it was never really going to be great for anything. Um, it is though an incredibly cool car and I'm really pleased to see a sort of classic American car that isn't a muscle car because although I love the muscle cars we do have loads of pretty similar things and this is just so different to anything else from that era that we have in this game. So super cool thing I do really recommend going and getting it because I, I mean look at it it's just incredibly cool isn't it even if it does require doing 40 points which is also slightly irritating um, but there we go that's why I've put it back to how it is with just the white walls and upgrades to make it a nice driving car but not anything that I'm going to be using for anything that though is going to be all for a very first look at this brand new to Forza Lincoln Continental so thank you very much for watching and I'll be back with the next one very soon mm -hmm.